The cell cycle is the life cycle of a cell. The stages of the cell cycle are interphase and emphase. During interphase, the cell does its normal metabolic activities. Interphase is not a part of cell division. This is what happens before and after cell division has been completed. Interphase is divided into three stages. During the first stage of, of interphase, G1, a new cell has just been created. The cell grows and carries out its normal metabolic activities. The second stage of interphase is known as S phase. During this stage, the DNA of the cell is copied or replicated and the cell begins to prepare for division. The third and final stage of interphase is G2. During this stage, the cell continues to grow and carry out normal activities and the cell continues to prepare to divide. M phase is the actual stage of cell division. M phase is divided into mitosis, which is the division of the genetic material or nucleus, and cytokinesis, which is the division of the cell or the cytoplasm. During interphase, the nuclear membrane of the cell is clearly visible. However, the chromosomes cannot be seen because the DNA is in an unwound form called chromatin. Also not visible are the spindle fibers, which will play an important role in mitosis later on. Together, mitosis and cytokinesis produce identical copies of the original or mother cell. Mitosis happens throughout the body from head to toe. The roles or purposes of mitosis are growth, repair, replacement of tissues or damaged cells, and in some organisms, mitosis is responsible for asexual reproduction. There are four distinct stages of mitosis. The first is prophase, second is metaphase, third anaphase, and four telophase. To help you remember the order, remember the acronym PMAT. After mitosis, cytokinesis divides the cell into two genetically identical cells. During prophase, the first stage of mitosis, the DNA condenses into chromosome form and the chromosomes first become visible. The chromosomes attach to the spindle apparatus or spindle fibers and the nuclear membrane of the cell dissolves away. During the second stage metaphase, the chromosomes attach to the spindle fibers and are pulled to the middle of the cell where they line up. During the third stage anaphase, the X-shaped mitotic chromosomes are pulled apart into individual V-shaped chromosomes and begin to migrate toward opposite sides of the cell. During telophase, the fourth and final stage of mitosis, the chromosomes reach opposite ends of the cell. A new nuclear membrane begins to form around each set of chromosomes. The DNA unwinds and the chromosomes disappear. The spindle fibers are also taken apart. The cell begins to pinch in the middle and is almost ready to divide. After telophase, cytokinesis divides the cell into two genetically identical cells called daughter cells. The cells are not only identical to each other, but are also identical to the original cell that they started from. The cell is called the mother cell. <laughs>
replace dead cells, and also to help you grow. In some organisms, mitosis is also responsible for asexual reproduction. Meiosis, on the other hand, functions to make haploid gametes, or sex cells. Uh, meiosis also functions to create genetic diversity in offspring. Mitosis takes one cell and makes two exact copies of the original mother cell. On the other hand, meiosis takes one diploid cell and after dividing two times results in four haploid cells. Each of these cells has half the number of uh, chromosomes in the original cell and these cells are not genetically identical. Next, let's look at how energy moves through a food chain. In a food chain, the bottom level is always a producer. A producer is an organism that can make their own food, usually through photosynthesis. Producers are also sometimes called autotrophs. Producers are eaten by what are called primary consumers. Primary consumers are typically herbivores. The primary consumers are then eaten by the secondary consumers, and the secondary consumers are then consumed by the tertiary consumers. Decomposers typically break down all the bodies of these organisms once they die. In the food chain pictured on the screen, algae are the producers. Algae are able to use the energy of the sunlight to make sugar. They can do photosynthesis. The algae are eaten by the primary consumers or crustaceans in this example. The crustaceans are then eaten by the puffins and the puffins are then consumed by the great black backed gulls. The gulls are the tertiary consumers, the puffins are the secondary consumers, the crustaceans are the primary consumers, and the algae are the primary producers. In the real world, things are more complicated than simple food chains. We usually designate or illustrate these relationships with what are called food webs. Food webs are several interconnected food chains. In the food web shown on the screen, corn is eaten by both mice and chipmunks. Corn is the producer, mice and chipmunks are the primary consumers. The mice are eaten by snakes, the chipmunks are eating by eaten by foxes. The snake and the foxes are secondary consumers, whereas the owl eats the snake, the owl is the tertiary consumer. We often use structures called energy pyramids to show the flow of energy through a food chain. The bottom and largest level of the energy pyramid is the producer or autotroph level. This level is the largest because there's the most available energy for these organisms to use. These organisms can use the energy of the sun. The next level in the pyramid consists of the primary consumers. These organisms eat the producers and thus have less available energy because some of the energy is lost. The producers use some of it and also in the process of digestion and respiration some energy is lost as heat. No energy conversions are 100% efficient according to the second law of thermodynamics. So as we continue to move up the pyramid the levels get smaller and smaller because the energy available to organisms at each successive level is less. Not only is the energy available less, but also the number of organisms get smaller and smaller as we move up the pyramid. Each level in an energy pyramid is referred to as a trophic level. Trophic means energy. An important rule to remember when talking about energy pyramids and trophic levels is the rule of 10. This rule states that only about 10% of the energy available to a particular trophic level is available to the organisms in the level above that level. This is because much of the energy is lost as heat and also some of the energy is used at each level. For example, if 10,000 joules of energy were available to the producers, only one-tenth of that, or about 1,000 joules, would be available to the primary consumers and only about a tenth of that or 100 joules would be available to the secondary consumers. Finally, only about a tenth of that would be available to the tertiary consumers. This would mean that there would only be about 10 joules of energy available for them. Less again stress. Because there's less energy available to the organisms in the upper levels of the energy pyramids, there can be less of those organisms. There's not enough energy to sustain top-level predators like sharks, owls, and such in large numbers.